So we have to, to start doing linear regression, we can use one package called stats models. And we can import stats models dot formula dot API as SMF. That's the standard import for stats models. Okay, so import that. And now we're going to create our first linear model, linear regression. A couple of people request linear regression. So my linear model is the SMF package dot the ordinary least squares linear model such that the formula for the model as defined by myself, the data person, is representative of the sales column, which actually I think has a lowercase s. So make sure this is sensitive, right? Lowercase s. And then tilde is predicted by what variable? TV. Whereby, comma, the data is the name of the data set, oops, advertising. And we're going to fit that with the fit to the ordinary least square model. I know it's kind of low. I'm going to try to move it up. Okay, so this should hopefully work. Shift enter. So now what we've done is we've stored the linear model, but we don't see anything. And the best way to see it is lm.summary. Let's see the, mo the summary of that model. And holy guacamole, we have ANOVA and p-value and confidence intervals and tons of yummy stuff. So first off, if you don't get this red sticky, pink sticky, because we want to make sure you actually get it. And then I could spend a minute or two just talking about it. It's mostly stats concepts, so I'm not going to go in depth. But I just want you to be like, that's kind of cool that it shows up. So yes? Could you just read the equation again? Like I know you said that it's like sales. Yeah, so the linear model LM equals the SMF package dot the ordinary least square, because that's the method of just general linear model with residuals. Mm -hmm. Opening the parentheses such that this formula, it's always formula equals, and you can do it with one variable or multiple variables. So sales tilde, right? So the y is being predicted from x. The dependent is a result of the independence. Y from x. Yeah, or the predictor is the result of the attribute or the feature. I'm throwing all these words because that's like data science speak. I just didn't want to get it the wrong way around. Yeah, y is to x or x1 and x2 and so forth. Okay. And then your data set does it. So if you wanted to do it for more than just those two, you would just add another tilde and add another variable? No, you would actually create a list and you would put multiple ones with commas. Got it. So instead yeah. of hard brackets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you, do you mean uh, like to do a regression with more than one variable or do other regressions? Yeah, she means with more than one variable. So it's plus, right? Let's try it. Let's see what happens, guys. This is supposed to be like plus radio. Right. Yep, plus radio. So just plus. Okay, so, so we have plus radio. Now we have another one. Plus newspaper. I don't use this package too often. I do more scikit learn. But yeah, and then we have more variables. So that's cool. You could do plus. So now we're running multiple linear regression. And that would take like many buttons in a, in a software. Yeah, sometimes your computer takes a while to process, or if you're in a virtual machine or whatever. Like, this takes a split of a second. Um, let me explain the one that's just TV first, just to, like, high level explain you a little bit of the output. And I'll just explain with the multiple. And then we'll stop on stats, take a coffee body break, and switch to SQL. Um, so first off, red, pink, sticky. If you're not getting output, green, sticky if you are getting output. Okay, so everyone has gotten some sort of output. Cool. Uh, a couple students haven't. Okay. Let me just explain this to y'all. Uh, most of this is pretty um, non-significant, but when you interpret this, just like SPSS, 
R square, very important, right? Typically, if this is 80% or higher, that's good. 60 to 80%, that's moderate. Less than 60%, your model's terrible, throw it away, try to adjust it. So that's super high level. Um, p-value, prob of f statistic, that is your p-value. E means 10 to the, it's scientific notation. So 10 to the negative 42nd, that means you have 41 zeros and then a 1, it's almost 0. In general, p-value, we test at a 5% threshold for those who've done stats. So we're comparing to there. Um, Oh, that is the st st stat model formula, stats models. Oh, so okay. we, we brought it in through their API. We brought in their API to work with data with their formula, which is this whole thing here, oh. stats models. And we abbreviated it as SMF. Because otherwise, what you do if we don't abbreviate, we didn't really show this to you. I have to write every single time, stats models that formula dot API. Like, let me run it like that, um, but it wouldn't work because I just have to do like that, and now it works. But I had to type this whole thing. Like, why would I ever want to type this many times? I could type the whole thing, but instead I'm just going to do as SMF because it's a shortcut. It just makes it look much nicer and easier to type. Does that make sense? All right, so we hit R square, um, prob of F statistic. What else is down here that's interesting? These are the coefficients when you create regression. This is your p-value for each variable. We don't care for intercept ever, but the variable is good. These are confidence intervals. We got other interesting stats things. Um, and then we can, of course, add multiple variables. So let's do plus radio, plus newspaper. So you guys could do that as well. Do plus radio plus newspaper. And what happens is your R squared changes. So actually in this data set, wow, adding multiple regression, way better predictor than just TV. And then down here, again, p-values, different confidence intervals. And we could, we could interpret different things but um, this isn't a stats class, so I'm going to limit how much I go too in-depth on that. This identifies the parameters for your linear model. Even though you can see them right here as coefficients, it just prints them out for you. And let me show you how we could do some prediction. This is multiple regression now. We just threw three variables here. Oh. Multiple linear regression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can say, say I have a data point that's interesting. So I'm going to add a new data point. X underscore new is being added to the, P, to the data frame, to the pandas data frame, pd dot data frame. Or we're, we're just, we're actually creating a data frame. So X new is a pandas data frame such that we're inserting a dictionary that for TV, the value will be 50,000. Don't put a comma. Comma will break it. Numbers shouldn't have commas when you put them in. Because in Python, commas treat it as you're inserting something else, not actually like comma in a number. OK, so we're typing, basically we're creating a pandas data frame. And in it, we're putting a dictionary for the key TV. We get the value 50,000 as a one number list. And if we're interested to see what that looks like, we can print out the head. And we see that. It is literally a, a one by one, uh, you know, like very small um, list. Okay. And if you want to predict this now, because I know in SPSS, we do prediction. So how would we predict the model? Let's say linear model dot predict. I'm going to predict the x new. So if I input 50,000 for TV, what will I output? Now before we do this, this will break because I haven't put anything for radio and newspaper. So let's go back up here and just make it up real quick. Um, comma, radio, 
let's give radio something like, I don't know, 10,000, no comma. Thank you. And then let's do something like newspaper and maybe give it like 5,000. And my syntax looks good. Let's reprint the head. Now we have very nice structured all three. And now if we do lm predict x new, you should spend, or your, your um, predicted advertising is $4,171 of that you get back if this was like an equation. So this just plugged in these three numbers for us into our multiple regression equation and told us the output. Which you've probably done SPSS before. So also again, super quick. For those of you who've done multiple regression, this makes sense. For those of you who haven't, it may not make sense, but I kind of encourage you to learn it. Uh, one last interesting thing before we move on to SQL is you could do your linear model dot p values. And that prints out the p value for every single one. All right, so that's often very important. Oh, another one. lm dot conf underscore int prints out your confidence intervals for each one as well. So I'll be saving this um, file after and putting it for you guys on the etherpad, because all this, I'm sure a lot of this is extremely helpful. All right, well, I only got through um, six of my nine <laughs> things and stats I wanted to cover. Um, this was definitely outside the scope of the material today, so I apologize for some of you who this was maybe hard to follow along with, but I hope many of you found it helpful. Yeah. Um, it's just other stats topics. Like I was going to teach normal distribution, central limit theorem, um, some other graphs. Like it's just standard stats things. It's just in Python. You'd have to learn how to do it. But Are there are resources for us to look into that. Of course, yeah. I'm just teaching you like the nuts and bolts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. So let me save this right now and put this up on Etherpad for you right now because we're about to move away from Jupiter. Because Julia is like, so R is typically faster than Python, and Julia is typically faster than R. But very few people use Julia. But Julia, they said in 2015, there was some article, Julia will be the future by 2018. And we're here, and still like less than 7% of people use Julia. And like, in like the data world, 100% of people use Python, half the people use R. And like, so Julia stole the, the, the sad single child, so. Um, <laughs> All right, let me get this file for you guys. Let's see, where is it? Over here. Nope. Over here. <laughs> yeah, so I put it, yesterday I put it right here. But that's just from mine, so, um, yeah. I'll put it also here, so like, day two. Jupyter Notebook Reference File Statistics. And let me put this on my Google Drive. Oh, it's going to be the same folder, I think. Let me see. Let me see if it works. Yeah, I put in the same folder. So the same link as yesterday, guys. This link right here will be the day one Jupyter Notebook that I worked on in day two. Um, yeah, I don't have, um, Jacob, if you could later on just put your etherpad, uh, your, um, your notebook, Jupyter Notebook up. Cool. So he'll, he'll add that later. But we'll put it all under the section. So that's those two. OK. Great. OK, so everyone feel free to close out of Anaconda, of Jupiter, of all your notebooks. We are done with all things Python for today. 
Round of applause for making us this far. So cool. You guys have all gone from accessing data to cleaning data to visualizing data to running linear models in two days. Like, that's really cool. Um, and so now some of you may be curious about big data sets. How can you query data? Or how can we manipulate data? So we're going to move into mode analytics. But we're not going to get into very advanced SQL topics. We're going to start with beginner, move into intermediate. But this is like a free site that includes beginner, intermediate, advanced. So you can study more after today. And my goal is to show you how this works. Uh, it works just like Jupyter. It's its own environment. And to get through as much as we can. So uh, everyone, please sign in with your accounts that you have. So. Uh, I need to sign in too. So if you haven't verified your account, you might need to do that. You might be already there. Oh, you have to verify. Uh, just to sign in. Okay, and we're gonna and we're gonna do the Mode Analytics SQL tutorial, which I'm gonna put on Etherpad at the way bottom. So there's a link, so you can click on that. And if everyone can, we're not going to go through like the mode organization and databases and stuff because this can get very complicated. We're really just going to teach you the query language of how to query data. So everyone should get this link up. Once you get the link up, green sticky please. And it should, um, to make sure that you're signed in actually, um, on the main mode analytics website, it should look a dashboard like this. So as long as you have that, and then your other tab, you have this, you're great. Okay, so first up, what is SQL? SQL is what existed before pandas. Um, SQL is still helpful for big data sets. It's actually helpful for really big data sets. It queries, it organizes data very, very fast with very simple code sometimes more efficient than pandas as well. So it's an alternative. Uh, again, we've only touched the beginning of pandas, this uh, workshop. But we're going to look now at SQL and how that can work. Before I do it, just show of hands who has worked with SQL before in the past. OK, so a third of the room. Keep your hands up if you've worked with SQL. Who here considers himself a beginner whose hands are up? Who considers themselves intermediate with SQL? And who considers themselves advanced with SQL? OK, advanced ones, uh, follow along. You're not going to learn anything right now, so sorry. Intermediates, you might. Um, or actually, if you're the intermediate or advanced. So on here, I want you to notice it says basic SQL, intermediate SQL, advanced. So if you're those advanced people, feel free to like ignore me right now and just go to the advanced section. Um, where you can see about joins and wrangling and formats. If you're intermediate, um, you could follow along. If not, you could jump to the intermediate section and look on joins. For everyone who's brand new to it, let's work on it together because I want to get you the exposure and all of that. Um, so we can read through all of this later, um, but it's a query language for databases. Uh, what is a database? A database runs on a server. It's basically an Excel spreadsheet that runs on the server. And the server can be local or it can be on the cloud. And you can have many databases, many Excel files. They're on a database so anyone can retrieve them. You can add data or remove data whenever you want if you're from different departments. It's a nice easy way for multiple people to access data without trouble. And until recently, SQL was used by like every company before Python and all these things were coming up. Still really helpful. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's click on SQL Select, if everyone can click on the third one. So there's different commands that run SQL. All queries start with the phrase select. You're going to select the name of the columns that you're interested in from your Excel file or database. So I want, like, for example, let me open this housing unit table. Um, no, it's okay. 
Why isn't it open? <laughs> oh, it's from the site. Okay. So I might select the year column, comma, the month column, comma, the west column from the name of my database. That's the initial structure. Select these columns from this. Mode Analytics is nice because they have a query editor that we're going to look at in a few minutes. Click on Try It Out. So on this page, there'll be Try It Out, and this is their editor. I'm going to walk you through it real quick. Although it looks very different from Jupyter, it's a similar type of editor, but for SQL. Where it says SQL up here, you can type your code. So we could type something like, uh, but first off, before you type your code, you want to know about your table or your database table. Notice on the right, it says tables, if, uh, and it says the name of the table. You could actually scroll through it and see the names of all the columns. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, you can build Python notebooks here, but that's not crazy important. Um, all we're going to do so far is run queries. So let's type our first query. Select. Um, commands are always in capital. You wouldn't really write select, although it'll still recognize it. You would do like select. And then let's find what we want. So from before, I said year, month, and west. So let's see, year, comma, month, comma, west. And then we like to put each command on a new line. So from, and then the name of that database, which, um, one moment, because I'm running this live here, from tutorial.us housing units, from tutorial.us, and just like Python, it autocompletes, so US housing units. Whenever you finish one of these commands, you need to use the semicolon. Otherwise, it won't run. And then to test it, you can press run and see what happens. So we run the query, and below, you see the output. So we have outputted these three columns, year, month, and west, and all the data. And in this case, only 100 rows were returned. Because by default, this probably shows 100 rows. You've just run your first SQL query. So that's a query. <laughs> whoop de whoop. Um, okay. So let's jump back here. Mm, what else can we do? Instead of this, the star, so select star from our table means select everything. So just show me the table, show me the database. And if you do run, it will take a lot longer, depending on how big is your database. And now we see everything, all the columns and all the data. Or if it shows by default the top 100 rows. Notice how under SQL, because we work with this table now, you can click <coughs> display table and just see the table as well that was output. OK. And. next. We could do more complicated select commands. We could say let's select the west region as quote west region. So we can rename it in SQL. So you're renaming the columns. Everything you're doing with SQL doesn't change your table. It just displays how you want your data viewed to then save as a report. So traditionally SQL has been a reporting solution for projects and teams. So let's select West as West Region from the tutorial of housing units. Run. <coughs> And now notice that the west column was renamed West Region. 
You can do this for multiple ones. So we select west as west region, comma. You can just write it here also, like south as south region. So if you don't want to call it, if you do spaces, you need the quotes. Just like in Python, it's, it's very, uh, it hates spaces. But if we were to do west region like this, we don't really need that. So you do select west as west region, south as south region from here. And now we have both of them. Generally, we don't use the quotes. Generally, again, also in SQL, most languages, we use the, the underscore as a nice way to name it. <coughs> okay, now what's nice about mode, why are we using mode analytics? If you go back to your SQL select statement page, at the way, way bottom is practice problems. They have practice problems all throughout here. So one says, write a query to select all the columns <coughs> and rename all the columns so that their first letter is capitalized. And so we can try it out by clicking try it out and it opens the editor for you again. So it's the same editor you have. Um, and we're not going to do this one, but I'm just going to show you other ones will practice. You can click see the answer. And then they actually show you what the table would look like. So that's great. And you can click on view details. And you can click on SQL and see what the actual code was. So I'll show that once more because that may have not been um, slow enough. So you click on see the answer. And then up on the top left says view details. And then that changes to view report. And you can click on SQL and see what the code is. So even though we're only going to spend, yeah, like another 15 minutes on SQL right now, there's a ton of practice problems baked into mode analytics with solutions so you can practice besides the ones they give you. So it's really well structured for you to study more on this. Um, and you can see here that in the question, Write the query so that you rename the first letter capitalized. Well, that's what we did here, right? We renamed actually by capitalizing each one. And from a readability perspective, you want one thing per line. So this is much more readable than, like this here, I'm about to show you something that's less readable. This would work, but it would be way less readable. Right? So putting it all on one line, you could do that. It's just really not readable. So bless you. I highly encourage the one item or one request per line. In mode, they didn't put the semicolon after here because in their system, they made it that if it's not there, it'll still run the code. But by default, I highly encourage you to put um, the semicolon after. Okay, so let's take a look at some more things. Uh, well, we can leave, leave your mode editor up. Uh, the next thing we're going to work with is, so let's view our data again. So let's just do select star from, and we were working with tutorial.us housing units. So just to see what we have, here's all our data showing up. But you might not want to see everything, right? It's a lot of data. I don't want to scroll through it. In Python, we have the dot head and dot tail functions to show the beginning and the end. In uh, SQL, it's the limit function. So limit 10. Let's see only 10 results. Um, always make sure the semicolon's on your last row. If we were to put the semicolon on the second row, we would cause an error. It would break. So always put that semicolon on the last row. So let's run that. And we just got 10 entries as output. OK? And they have practice problems for each thing I'm explaining to you. So I'm just reviewing with you like the high level concepts. But there's a practice problem to review limit more so. There's a practice problem for all of this. OK? Uh, maybe you want something specific, such as only a certain month. So the where clause lets you set conditions, where month equals one. Let's see what that does. 
we see all the Januaries, right, where month equals one. You could even do where month equals one, limit 10. So we're adding multiple statements together. So Januaries, and I only want to see 10 of them output. So you can start seeing we can be putting all these conditions together. So instead of doing where month equals one, we could say maybe where the region west is the numbers greater than 30. So where west is greater than 30, we could run now with a comparison operator. And we get that output. We could say when it's, we could use all types of outputs. Equal, not equal is either like this or like that. Right, either one's not equal. We could do greater, less than, greater, equal, less than, or equal. These are all the same syntax in Python as well. So all these operators you can use. So we could have done like west is greater than or equal to 30. And so forth. Uh, we could do something like where month is not equal to January. We could do something like that. And then we get all the other months. Uh-oh, what happened here? What did I do, guys? So we don't actually, um, if we, here's something funny. Well, uh-huh. Let's try just January, see if that fixes it. I think month is a new yeah, so let's take a look. So like, what is, mo what is month really? Like, we, we have to take a look at our data. So if we look at month, it's actually month is number, oh. month name, right? So it's being very careful with your data, right? So where month name is not equal to January, then that should run effective. Still didn't run. Look at this, guys, right? So I'm, I'm actually intentionally pausing just to see if you guys are noticing what's happening. So I mentioned semicolon always needs to be at the end. Yeah. If you put two semicolon causing error, and if you leave just in the middle, so that semicolon has to go. And now it works. Right? So I'm just like making intentional common mistakes uh, for you guys. Um, what else? What if you wanted to sum, sum up like a, a column? Yeah, so there's ways to do sum and average and so forth. We're going to get into those functions as well. Well, we might not get into them today, but in the mode analytics material, they show some of those on finding average, max, min, things like that as well. Okay, here's another thing we can do. So we can start applying mathematics, which is kind of what was just bringing up. So what if I want select, I want to see the year, um, tabbing, the month. So here's what's nice. If you format it, it auto formats. So like, instead of just writing select year, do select tab, year, comma, tab, month comma and then auto will tab format for you to create the structure so then west south i want a new region called west plus south so that's how you could do math plus so west plus south as the south plus west region and then we need to tab back right because from is, is its own operator so from the data set and when we run this, now we will see our year, month, west, and south, and we've created a new temporary column, south plus west. We could even do west plus south minus four times year. And call this like, this is just like a nonsense column. All right, we can do more advanced calculations. And now we get this interesting value that is meaningless. We can also do division, west plus south, divided by two. 
which would be maybe something like southwest average. Right, so you can start seeing, we can be adding all these different calculations. None of this is changing your database. It's just creating a display that then you could download as a CSV file or print as a report or so forth. Just like Python, there are tons of logical operators that do many, many different things. And we'll cover those maybe. But we're going to use a different uh, database now. So let's take a look at select star from tutorial.billboard, top 100, year end. So let's take a look at some billboard music. Um, yeah, Elvis, and we only see 100 rows here. So we could maybe, you might say, well, this isn't interesting. I don't want to know 1956. Like, I wasn't alive then. Um, so we could say, well, let's select it from here, but why don't we order by year descending? And ordering by year descending, we can call that a year rank. So let's see what this means. So now we're going from basically biggest year to smallest year. And then we're ranking um, at the start to the end. So actually, initially, we had the year and year rank columns, but it was the other way around. And it wasn't ordered right. So this code lets us order by is choosing how you want it. So descending or ascending. Ascending to descending is smallest to largest. Descending to ascending is largest to smallest. So in SQL, you just write either ASC or DESC. So DESC descending. So we're descending by year, biggest to smallest. Um, and then we're sorting by year rank. And that's what happens here. So we have in 2013 all the ones first, and then all the twos, and so forth. Great songs that are here. Great songs. We'll do a couple more commands. So um, we've also seen where from a few minutes ago. So select from the database, tutorial, billboard, top 100, where the group, this one, right, the group, the band, is like. So it means similar to Snoop and then the percent sign. So percent sign is a wild card in SQL, which means if it starts or includes the phrase Snoop, display all Snoop type things here, right? So a little bit of the text analysis, right? How many bands would have Snoop in them? I'm not sure. Um, but let's take a look. And we see there's a Snoop Doggy Dog band, a Snoop Dog with Pharrell band, and Uncle Charlie, a Snoop Dog just with Pharrell, a Snoop Dog R. Kelly, so all his collabs, right? Wiz Khalifa, Bruno Mars. So that's pretty cool. We could also do I like. So what's the difference with I like versus like? Like is case sensitive. I like is not case sensitive. So if I run I like with a lowercase s in Snoop, it still picks up capital S. But if I run like with a lowercase s in Snoop, it finds nothing. It's specifically case sensitive. So generally, I like would maybe be used more often. Okay. We can also do something where it's like I want where the column, so just where artist also, where artist I like Dr. K E, D R K E. So let's try with quotation and without. So with quotation recognizes the column. 
and without quotation also recognizes the column. So if it's already named as a column, you don't need that quotation. And so here we have dr underscore ke. So when we put it here with I like, the underscore means a character that is missing from there that can be filled in. So how many words can this be? Probably just Drake. I'm not sure if anything else showed up, like Droke or if there's another band name, but it's basically right wherever Drake showed up. So maybe you didn't know how to spell it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just walk you through the rest of the mode analytics site so you know what you can do with SQL because unfortunately it's 4.15 and we're like running out of time really quick. What you've seen is literally just the basics of SQL. But the site's really cool. So we just went through select, limit, where, comparisons, logical, like, all together. So we did it all in like 20 minutes, which is really cool. There's other ones, in, between, if it's empty, null, and or or, doing logic, not, how it's ordered. It's intermediate, such as all the functions that you mentioned, count, sum, min, max, average, so we can do a lot of statistics. Grouping data, distinct unique values, joining databases, many different ways to join databases. Advanced SQL, which includes formatting dates, adding in new calculations with wrangling and cleaning, querying. Um, and then this one is just like if you're trying to pay them for money for training. <laughs> so the basic intermediate advance will get you quite far. In my opinion, I've, I've trained a lot of people in SQL. If you do just these three, and when you do each one, like min-max, then you scroll down, they have the try it outs. Do your best to like try it out without looking at the answer see if your answer matches their answer. And there's sometimes multiple ways to get an answer. So it's okay if your SQL is different code than theirs, but it's great practice. If you do the basic, intermediate, and advanced, you'll be as good at SQL as many people in the industry. So it's really quite effective. Okay, um, high level questions or thoughts on SQL and using this mode analytics platform. I neither endorse or don't endorse Mode Analytics, so because they are obviously an organization that does analytics, some companies use them for SQL. There's many ways to use SQL. You can use Microsoft Server. A lot of companies use SSIS and SSRS, which are reporting server tools. Um, some companies use MySQL just directly with Python. Some use Docker containers. There's many different ways to run databases. But the whole purpose here was to give you exposure to querying. So if you come across querying, uh, you can have some skills to do that. Awesome. So that was a short brief into SQL. Hope you found this fascinating. You have your free accounts. The free accounts don't expire as far as this training goes. Like there's no like fear like, oh my gosh, the account expires tomorrow. No, for that. Um, if you get spam emails from other analytics, just unsubscribe from them so you don't have to you know, be like, buy our service, buy our service, or whatnot. Great. What else? Guess what, guys? I know it's day two, and I'm really sad, too, because it's been such a short time together. But as always, we love your feedback. So I'd like everyone to take a couple minutes right now. Today, you don't have red stickies. You have green and pink stickies. So please put on green stickies, any warm fuzzies, things you liked, things that were good on the workshop for today, day two. And on your pink stickies, cold pricklies, didn't like them, would have had, would have liked as well. <clears throat> Take a couple of minutes there. When you finish the green and red stickies, please go back to the Rutgers University page. And we'd like you to do one more thing which is right now to fill out the post-workshop survey. The post-workshop survey is really important um, because as you all know, uh, not only did Jacob and myself volunteer our times, but none of you paid additional money for this class because of the amazing work of grant funding that Rutgers received to support you guys in doing the boot camp. And 
part of taking the post workshop surveys for us to get you know feedback and to analyze metrics on you know how this class was for you. So after you finish your stickies, please complete this post workshop survey um, here in person right now. Thank you. And also, if you did not sign up, I just uh, we want yeah. Let us just give a plug to um, Jacob, David, and Esther. Yeah. Who came guys and we really enjoy these two days and still fill out the survey if you haven't finished yet as a reminder the etherpad lives online it's not dying even though it's never been alive so it's still up here um, and on it you will see that you have Jacob and my emails so you can reach out to us you have questions things so forth we're available we're not at your disposal but we're available mm -hmm. so <laughs> um, thanks so much uh, hope you enjoyed the workshop uh, stay dry. There's supposed to be fog in New Jersey and New York tonight because the temperature rose so quick. So be safe if you're driving. Um, and thanks for attending the boot camp. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Oh, let me add one more thing. I, I realized I forgot that one of the students mentioned earlier. If you enjoy the work we're doing with Software Carpentry, again, Software Carpentry is about putting ourselves out of business. We're really about empowering universities and communities. If you like what you did today and you want to help out a future workshop that Rutgers has, feel free to reach out to Ming Lu and Bonnie and the whole team here. Additionally, if you're looking to become an instructor in the future and you want to teach boot camps like yourself, reach out either to Rutgers or the Software Carpentry team and we can start moving you through that process. We're really here about democratizing computer science and data science. So, thanks again.